Welcome, Thunderbird Nation, to the Thunderbird Coaches Show. It's episode 12. Um, we would like to thank our sponsor, Warehouse Bar and Kitchen. Uh, they're a proud supporter of SEU Athletics. Warehouse Bar and Kitchen has great food, great drinks, and is always showing all of your favorite sports and UFC fights. Mark your calendars for their New Year's Eve party and follow the warehouse on social media to see all the ongoing fun. Warehouse would like to remind everyone to have fun and always drink responsibly. The Warehouse Bar and Kitchen. Uh, Reggie was down at the game. We, uh, we I saw him, um, and uh, we really appreciate him and his his sponsorship of the coaches show as well as Thunderbird Athletics. So shout out to to uh, Reggie and the Warehouse Bar and Kitchen staff. I uh, really appreciate your your uh, tutelage or your uh, your your. We'll we'll edit that out, but we'll uh, we really appreciate your uh, support. No edits. Hey, ready, hey, Reggie. We'd like to thank you for everything. Yeah, appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, Coach, we need to we need to recap uh, Utah Tech. We need to talk about it. We need to clear the air and move on. Talk talk to us a little bit about uh, about the game on Saturday. It was homecoming down there in St. George. Uh, big crowd. Um, long halftime. I mean, they had they kind of pulled out all the stops. Uh, let's 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 talk about some some highlights uh, on offense and defense. Recap the game for us. Yeah, it, it came out came out ready to play. Um, went back and forth with two scores early on, two field goals early on. Um, we fell down two scores uh, midway through the first quarter to to the start of the second quarter. We're down two scores. Come back and take the lead. They take the lead, we take the lead back, and then they get the football back with a minute left in the first half and put a 75-yard drive, um, score, score a touchdown on us and still 20 seconds left on the clock. Um, John, un- unacceptable. Unacceptable for our coaching staff, unacceptable for our players, um, but the coaching and the execution of the coaching has to be better going forward. You talked about clearing the air there. Yeah. Um, uh, we cleared the air as a football program and offense, defense, special teams cleared the air yesterday. Um, so we've moved forward. Now finishing the second half, um, they'd score, we'd score, they'd score, we'd score. For the most part, we stayed down two scores the majority of the second half and didn't didn't have any didn't have any juice on defense and didn't have any answers for what they were doing to us in the passing game and in the run game um, and just did, didn't finish the way that we had finished some games over the past month. Um, as completely honest as I can be with you. If you had told me, if you any any point in time in my career, if you tell me going into a game, you're going to win the special teams part of the football game, and then you're going to score 36 points on offense. Well, I'm going to smile and tell you we're going to win the football game. Right. But with Saturday night, it's not the way it went. But um, yeah, we beat them like a drum on special teams. Sure. And then on offense, we played more than good enough to win. And just uh, it start it starts with the coaching staff. It starts with the head coach. It starts with the head coach, and the game plan has to be better than it was for us on Saturday night in college football. You have to make people play left-handed. And what I mean by that is is that they, if, if they're a throwing team, they come into the game that they have five to eight uh, uh, of their staple throwing plays, um, concepts, routes. You have to take those away from them. And then you have to turn around and take away the top two or three runs. Well, we didn't take away any of the route combinations or anything they were trying to do throwing the football, and we didn't take away their run game good enough either. Going forward, that, that and, and correct you, you were free to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, weeks and years down the road, uh, we're going to go into football games, and whatever somebody does best, we're going to work really, really hard to take that away from them. Right. Well, and it's not it's not like you didn't try to, right? I mean, we talked. You talked about uh, God. I think it was four or five shows again ago. You talked about. Um, how a good football team will impose their will and score going into halves and at the end of mm-hmm. games, right? So it's it, obviously you didn't you didn't uh, you know game plan to to let them do that, but the reality is, man, I mean that that last minute forty seven of the first half, uh, they really took it to us, and and they found uh, what they liked and they were able to execute what they liked against us, uh, number thirteen. Um, ran crazy. I mean, I think he had, 
I mean, for a receiver to have, what was it, 200 and, 277 yards? 277 yards as a receiver. And and my guess is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, number uh, number 12, what a great player, uh, Holbert. Yep. Um, you know, he had, a, he had a decent night, and for him, 140 yards and two touchdowns is pretty normal. Um, but was there a concerted effort to take that away and then 13 got away from us? Where was the where was the disconnect as far as the defense specifically in the passing game? Well, we're, we're, we're playing some cloud coverages. And and our DBs are not over top. They're, they're they're not over top of the receivers in the cloud like they're supposed to. And on, on a couple of those routes Saturday night, it looks like we're in man to man coverage, and we're actually playing we're playing too high, and we're playing quarters, and we're just playing it so poorly that that, that it looks bad when the football goes in the air. Um, but John, I, I'll, I'll switch gears with you here a little bit. Sure. As as a college, co- I let's go back to the start of this. My my brother had the honor of playing for Bud Foster, who's a future Hall of Famer, one of the greatest college defensive coordinators of all time at Virginia Tech. Um, and, and I had the opportunity to follow him around as a young coach in a coaching circuit and, and befriend him enough that he would talk to me. And, and one of the things he said to me, he said, if you're ever sitting in a room with a bunch of great football players, with a bunch of great football coaches, excuse me, he said the last person holding the pin wins the argument. He goes, they always win the argument because they have counters. Well, here's what should have happened Saturday night, okay? We had our game plan. Dixie had their game plan. They come out and they executed their game plan early better than we did. We should have had a counter and made them counter to that counter, and then we should have countered again. But you have to have multiple options, and you have to have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. And going forward, going forward, we'll get that straight. Yeah. But but uh, no, nothing, nothing uh, uh, hey, it falls on the head coach. Well, what the famous Mike Tyson quote, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah. Right? And so... Or until they get bitten in the ear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Evander on the field, right? <laughs> so, um, defensively, obviously, we struggled. We, we, didn't, we didn't necessarily have the right answers. We didn't counter. Um, uh, it's it's uh, four of the last five games that we've uh, the opponent scored in the, in the high 30s, low 40s um, against us. So, that seems to be... Four out of the last five, is that right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's how I see it. Um, just a lot of points going up on the, on the board. Um, talk, talk to us a little bit about offense. Let's talk about the offensive highlights. You said we played, we, we, we scored enough points that I th- you should be ha- Well, I, you'll be happy as a coach to usually score 36, right? Correct. So, so tell me about the offensive highlights and, and where, uh, maybe you saw some, some, uh, opportunity there. And then also maybe where, where they were able to, uh, to hold us. Talk, talk to us a little bit about the offense. And, 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 uh, in, in modern-day college football, with, with the spread offenses and the no huddle and the number of plays that are being run and stuff through the course of a game. We had a game earlier this year where we played 202 total plays. Wow. But with the number of plays, um, if an offense – if a defense holds an offense to under 30 points, they should win. Now, the flip side of that is if an offense scores over 30 points in a college football game, they should win the football game yeah. because the defense and special teams should do their part uh, of the load. Um Blair Peterson and our offensive staff, which is uh, Aaron Fernandez and Darius Smith and, and Will Brunson and T.J. Peer and Jordan Brown and Brady Meesum and um, Tyler Smith are, are doing a great job of getting our players ready to go, getting yeah. them ready to go and keeping things positive and just working on daily, daily improvement. Our guys are getting 1% better each day. Our offense, uh, you take out the Abilene Christian game, our offense over the last six weeks, seven weeks, has gotten better every single week. And, and now the key is for the, for the next – two weeks for the next two games that we continue our gradual incline that, that we're inclining continuing to get better uh said, said this a hundred times before and saying it again we don't play a senior they're all back the, the, they're all back and we finished this season averaging somewhere in the 30s well it gives us a whole lot to build off of. absolutely absolutely so coach we talked about uh defense we talked about offense um the highlight i thought for for su was was the uh the special teams i mean that was was I, I don't know if, what the records are, but I got to think that the two hundred plus yards that uh, that Isaiah Wooden had in the return game have to be up there in in uh, SU history. Uh, what a return game! In my in my twenty seven years of college football, it's the second most I've seen. That's wild. Yeah, it's it's, it's the second most. Um, 
a great, great decision, great move by Darius Smith to put Isaiah back there on Saturday night because he hadn't been back there in a while. Yeah. Um, but it was a good decision to put him back there. And, and John, we're sitting here talking to you. We blocked it wrong three times. He had five returns. We blocked three of them wrong. If we block them correctly, you know, Isaiah's hitting his head on the goalpost. <laughs> Yeah. So they're, they're touch instead of fifty yard returns, they're touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just it was it was special to watch. It was fun. It was fun to uh, be a part of watching those uh, returns. It really got our crowd going. By the way, shout out to the crowd. I mean, we had uh, we had to have uh, at least fifteen hundred people there. I, I don't know. It was but but they answered the call. We asked I was going to guess. Them. I was going to guess at two thousand. Yeah, two thousand. A lot, lot of lot, lot of fans for a road game. Sure. I mean, we, it was, it was awesome. They answered the call. Uh, they came down to St. George and, uh, ho hopefully in the future, the, the, um, the score will reflect, uh, you know, the passion and, 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 uh, and all the hard work that goes in this time, they got the better of us. We beat them earlier on in the season, uh, in the conference, uh, in the conference matchup when we were playing for the conference, but, uh, nevertheless, uh, we got a, a good little rivalry brewing. I know you hate rivalries. Fans love it, so we're going to talk about it a little bit. But we got we got a great rivalry. Why don't we, why don't we wait till we play them at least a handful of times well, before we call it a rivalry? It was exciting. It was exciting. It was the first time we played at their place since 1960, and the last time we played at their <laughs> place, the bus broke down and we had to hitchhike to the game. So, I mean, at least the buses didn't break down and we got to the game, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll just, we'll call it a, we'll call it a, um, a proximity rivalry for now. We'll play them a few more times and, and get a few more, uh, scores under the belt and then we can start. I don't know. I'm excited. I, I've always, I've always just the St. George Cedar city, uh, rivalries have always been near and dear to my heart. Yeah, but you go zero to 60 every morning when the sun comes up now. It yeah. doesn't take a whole lot to get you excited. No, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I am that kind of guy. I'm just I'm I'm always yeah. I'm always there. So, um, anything else you guys or you wanted to talk? Rod, welcome our guest. We'll we'll get into an introduction in a sec. Did you from the players? You want you want to talk to him for ten yeah. minutes and then I'll introduce him. No, no, him. no, no. no. <laughs> huh? How just, about how about I introduce him and then you talk to him? Let's for 10 do that, minutes. Coach. Will you introduce the guest? Yeah, got got Roger Ward here. Um, he, he is from the desert in California. He finished up at Beaumont High School, which Rod, Rod, Rod is one of three players on our team from Beaumont, and we've got two young receivers going to follow him, going to be really good players. Um, our, our tradition with Beaumont, Beaumont, California right now is the kids come in here and they're really good people and they're really good players also, so a lot, lot of fun to be around. Fantastic. Um, Rod, Roderick is a junior in the classroom and a junior on the field, and he is currently third on our team with 30, uh, 46 tackles, three interceptions, and 11 pass breakups um so so he's having a good year and i'm gonna bang the drum again now um R roderick is one of uh, out of our top 10 leading tacklers on a team seven of them return next year and roderick's one of those seven yeah. um but but hey hey good player good player and a good person fun to coach welcome rod appreciate you being here man thanks for having me man. appreciate it you bet so i was going to ask you um thanks for the intro coach i was going to ask you from from the uh player's perspective on the field um, is there any extra chippiness going against uh, uh, Utah Tech, or is it just normal business as usual? What did you see out there? As, Rod, as Rod he's going to bang this rivalry drum and bang it and bang it. He's going to come at you from six different angles. So. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, last night, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't uh, that much of like gritty and stuff like that. Like we're all good with each other. Like sure. for Joey, like me and Joey are cool. Like, uh, we follow each other on Instagram. Like, during the game, we're joking, cracking jokes. Yeah. Like, on one route, he got me, and then one time I got him. So, we're just going back sure. and forth. So, it's just like a, a good, like, friendly good battle. Good competition. But, yeah, just competition all around. But, good. Um, yeah, honestly, I feel like, like as Coach said, I just want to piggyback what he said. It's just the execution. I feel like we didn't execute enough. And uh, we had we had a game plan, but I feel like that, too, we didn't trust the game plan. So I feel like coming back next week, we need to execute more and trust the game. Have a little trust. Have a trust in the coaches and in the other players that, yeah. that, that you can do your 111th. Make sure you lock it down on your side. Trust the brother behind, uh, beside you, in front of you, behind you, wherever they are, that they're going to do their job and exactly. just let it rip. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, um, Rod, let's talk a little bit about you. So you are a red shirt junior but a senior in school? Yeah, I graduated in the spring. Okay, what uh, what are you studying? What and you? How long have you been in uh, in Cedar City for four years now? No, or I did actually, you transfer? I actually went to JUCO. Okay, for one uh, one season. Then I came here. 
Got it. So I've been there for three years, so since 2019. Okay. Yeah, but um, right now I'm majoring in general studies. Sure. I started in computer science and stuff like that, but... Uh, flipped it over to general yeah, studies. flipped it over to general studies. So in general studies, obviously that's a, a broad... A broad base education. Correct, correct. Um, what do you What do you tend to to enjoy class wise or or subject wise out of out of all the things that you've gone through? What What do you feel like uh, is more tuned to you, or or what do you like the best? Uh, I would have to say communication. Okay. I like to uh, get in like discussion groups and like all have like our own little like piece and like come together as one. Sure. So I like communication and stuff like that, or like even. That. Um, even like sport class, I'll take a couple of sport classes, like PE classes on like teaching like uh, kids with like mental disabilities and stuff like that. Okay. So I like that area too. Yeah, like some maybe some special ed yeah. so you can help help those kids along and teach them. Yes, I sir. I like that. Cool. Um, I'm going to ask you a few questions. So you're from the Palm Springs area. Yes, sir. Um, what was it like growing out? Uh, I mean... I've been to Palm Springs and it is hot in the summertime. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, tell me, tell me a little bit about growing up in in the desert there, and then t- uh, tell me about what was your favorite moment in high school? Like, what was the favorite moment of uh, your football career in high school? Okay, uh, well, first growing up in, uh, in the Palm Springs area, like you said, it was hot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I feel like it was more like um, outgoing. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on. Okay. At once compared to Cedar. So, I mean, growing up, it was so rah-rah going all yeah. over the place. But um, I feel like it was kind of cool just having my friends and stuff like that around and, like, being around the right crowd to not get caught up into, like, the bad yeah. stuff yeah. like that. But, yeah, growing up in the Palm Springs area, was, it was cool. It was nice. Good stuff. Yeah, but um, in high school, I'll probably say my senior year. Even though I had to sit out five games my senior year, um, I had actually transferred from – the rival school, because I was at the rival school before. Okay. And then I went to our rivals. Juicy. Yeah, so it was kind of crazy. But um, most of my cousins were on the team that I had left. <laughs> and uh, it got kind of chippy. <laughs> it got gritty. The game, yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. I, I, I got to say, that's the best uh, memory in high school. Yeah, for sure. What about college so far? What's um, your highlight moment? Highlight moment? Or highlight game? I'll probably say this year. It has to be this year for sure. I feel like this year we're more of a team. Okay. Um, and my, I feel like the best game was probably the Utah Tech game the first time we the played. The first time we, we yeah. matched up? The first time we matched up. I feel yeah. like that was a great game for me. So I feel like that was the best uh, Good experience. Ex- did, you have yeah. a, did you have a pick in that game? I had two, actually. Yeah, be a, be a, to- a toss-up because you play well against St. Thomas, too. Oh, yeah, St. Yeah. Thomas, too. St. Thomas, Thomas Utah yeah. Tech this year. He played, he played very well in both games. Awesome. Awesome. Now let's get to know you a little bit, a little bit better. Talk to us about. Um, I know there's not much to do in Cedar City. In fact, if there's anything to do in Cedar City, it's pretty exciting. But what's your favorite thing to do in Cedar City? You've been here since 2019. What's some things that since 2019 you found to do here in Cedar City that you um, like to do? I, I probably became like the best bowler out here, if you ask me, man. <laughs> I'm probably the best bowler Ooh. out here. <laughs> there, well, there's a that's we can we can bet up downs. <laughs> All right, we hey, can do that. Hey, we, you, no, <laughs> hey, Co- Coach Bates uh, lights out. For real? Coach Madison really good. <laughs> yeah, Coach hey, Bates hey, has the, he has four. He has a he has like a whole roller of of balls that he brings in, and depending on how hot the lane is, he changes balls. That's what kind of we've got. Color we've got is. three. Co- we've, huh? yeah, we've got three coaches on staff get mad at a two sixty. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I've like only it. had one two sixty in my life, and I think I used the bumpers and the roller. <laughs> <laughs> not, never, never had a two sixty. If I added two two games together, together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you know Isaiah Wooden thinks he's a professional. Uh, he said he liked it. Yeah, he said yeah. he yeah. was in. He's in. You play it at all with Isaiah? No, I'm always playing with uh, Isaiah Williams. Okay. okay. Hey, we, we need we we'll need do a ma- coach versus yeah. player. Yeah, we might have to have <laughs> we might have to uh, talk to the uh, bowling alley about doing and a sponsorship. Can, yeah, like, like you can visualize how Coach Hartman throws the bowling oh, ball, yeah. right? Oh yeah, I can. I can visualize oh, yeah. that one for sure. <laughs> so sometimes it hits the pins before it ever touches the floor. <laughs> sometimes it probably hits yeah, the other boom. lane before it hits yeah. his pins. Yeah. Awesome. Um. So, so you you like to play the uh, you like to like do bowling. What about like on campus? What what are some things you like to go to other sporting events? Um, you just just lay low, hang out with your roommates. Like, what's another thing that you like to do in Cedar? Um, I like to go to the basketball games. Yeah, me and a couple of basketball guys are pretty cool and okay. close together. So I like going to the basketball games, 
And then even out here, like in the little pod area with the video games. Yeah, video we'll, games. Yeah, we'll we got the ping the, pong. Yeah, we'll do the uh, Madden tournament sometimes. Okay. And you know I'm the reigning champion that too. So if y'all want to bet on that one too, we can bet on hey, that one too. He, he, he's already <laughs> lied about bowling, so I don't think he can. I don't think he can play Madden either. Awesome. Um, rapid fire. What's your favorite food? Mm, I gotta say hot wings. Hot wings. Hot wings. Okay. Gotta be hot wings. Any any specific flavor outside of just the hot, or just hotter the better? The hotter the better. Okay. For sure, the hotter the better. Okay. Uh, what about your favorite color? Blue. If you had to choose um, a car, and if, if if money wasn't an option, what would you get? All white Benz, cream interior. I thought about this a long time. All ago. white Benz. <laughs> Which Benz? There's no, uh, re- hey, no resale value. <laughs> ride around. Well, there you is ride some. A- it's just this yeah, much. You, you ride around. <laughs> hey, at the day you pay it off. The day you pay it off costs you more to fix it than it's worth. Yeah, that's what my dad always says. Uh, the maintenance on it costs a lot of money, too. Yeah. But uh, that wasn't the question. <laughs> the it. question is not yeah. what's the most practical no, what he car. Wants. Yeah, what he yeah, wants. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Remember in life, assets versus liabilities. Amen you want to assets. that. Assets. Anything you pay better pay you back. Yeah, you want assets, <laughs> not liabilities. Yeah. No, yeah, I got you for sure. Um, let's see. What about music? Who do you listen to? Um, I gotta go with Bino Rado. A lot of people don't know about Bino, but I listen to Bino probably every day, or probably uh, Kalon for real, for real. Or uh, if I want to take it back, I'll probably go listen to Snoop Dogg and Ice Cube. Okay, I know who those two are, but the other two, <laughs> no, I'm, uh-uh. st- I'm stuck on K9 for real, for real. <laughs> yeah, for real, that, for real. Kalen for real, and Kalen for real, for real. Bino, what was it? Bino Rado. You listen, hey, you listen, old blue. No sir. Young blue, <laughs> oh, it's young, old yellow. Yeah, young oh, blue. It was young, young blue, blue, wasn't it? Oh my goodness! Oh, it kills me. Yeah. So I look. I so hip hop, uh, kind of a new thing and an old thing going. Uh, what else do we need to know about you, man? Um, I don't know. I'm pretty laid back. Uh, people always say I got a scary face every time they see me, but I'm not scary. A man. scary face. Yeah, I'm, I'm not scary. I, I don't. I don't know what they see. I don't know if it's the eyebrows or the eyes, but it's the intensity. The yeah, intensity maybe. of work that goes on between maybe. those ears. I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, but I'm. A, I'm a cool. I'm yeah, a cool dude. Approachable. Yeah, I like that. Um, man, I. I'm. We're just thankful to have you here at the university. Thankful to. Uh, to. To have you got. You, here on you the got. Show. A, you, he, he's. He's signing you off now. You. You got people at home curious. You said you're graduating in May. Are, are you back for grad school and to play your senior year? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. Hey, you heard it here first. That's exciting. Cool. Um, any shout outs? You, oh, yeah. You, you want to um, give us a couple shout outs? I got to give it to my mom and my dad. Man. Hey, he learned mom, quick. Mom, moms and pops gets the shout out. Um, Thanks, Lee. <laughs> and uh, the biggest shout out goes to God. Yeah. Uh, most importantly. That's cool. Without uh, him, none of this is possible. So he definitely gets the most glory. What about brothers and sisters? You got any brothers and sisters? I got one sister. Okay. She's older. Uh, she was actually in the Navy. Oh, cool. Yeah, she just got out the Navy, so yeah, so she has a niece, or I have a niece now. She has a daughter. Yep. So uh, okay, cool. we're just embracing that. Yeah, I like that. My, which, yeah. What's your My, niece's name? Jayla. 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 Shout out Jayla. Jayla what? Jayla Ray. Jayla, Jayla Ray. Ray. Love it. How old Where, is she? She's three. Three, okay. Where was your sister stationed at? A couple of places. She was in, she started in uh, Chicago, and then she got stationed in San Diego. Okay. So I, uh, my dad was in the Navy for 22 years. So I'm a Navy brat. I oh, followed, yeah. we, my family followed him all over the place. We were stationed in San Diego for a while. That was good times. Um, in fact, my next door neighbor was the all-star second baseman for the San Diego Padres, Dave Cash. Not a lot of people. That was a while back. That was 1979. But um, yeah, great, great area. I love 1979 Padres. All right, let's old. see. Let's see. <laughs> Steve Garvey. Steve Garvey, for sure. Um, Goose Gossage. Okay. Um, that they made the World Series one of those years in the early 80s, right? Right, right in that patch, and, and my, yeah. My, of course, my father had me sitting in front of the TV, and he's telling me how Ray, Ray Kroc owned McDonald's, and he said, you know that playground you like? He said, that guy that owns that playground owns that team. And, and yeah, he went through all that, and I used to love Goose Gossage's mustache. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, just, just stand up there looking big and ugly and throwing heat. So Dave was cool. I was, I was like, we lived next to him between uh, the time I was two and three and a half. And, you know, I'm just in diapers, tearing down in my three-wheeler, like, hanging out. Right. And uh, he was he was always so cool. But he got us tickets to the games just whenever we wanted. My dad caught a foul ball that Dave hit. 
So he signed it for us. I still have it on my mantle. Super cool moments. Go. Yeah. I love sports. If you haven't, you know, noticed, I love sports. Sports just, I mean, there's nothing like it. There's no script. It's always exciting. There's always something going on unexpectedly. Uh, man, it's just the best. So I don't know. Thanks for, thanks for sharing and being here with us, man. Um, not going to sign you off, but we are going to preview uh, Senior Day coming up uh, this Saturday at 1 p.m. here at uh, Eccles Coliseum. Uh, Coach, tell us a little bit about your seniors. We've got, is it 12 seniors that will be? 12, 12 seniors. Okay. You, you can't ask me to name them because I'm, I'm going to leave. Fair. I'm going to leave out. I'm going to leave out one or two. But we, we've got 12 seniors, and it's it's you know four, four, three starters, three, three starters on defense, and, and a bunch of contributors, and um, just great young men. Yeah, great young men, and was able to have a conversation with them about we're going to honor them before the game and make sure we see them off the right way this weekend. Um, but but yeah, it, it, on it, you talk about we do shout outs here, but on on air, just really really appreciative of those twelve young men because it's it's three or four graduate transfers. And then, then it's another nine young men, eight or nine young men that have been here for three, four, five years and done done the right things and done hey, given their best to improve this football program. Sure. Um, c- couldn't be more thankful for them than I am. And, and just, just uh, uh, Roderick, myself, our whole football program just appreciates all they've done. Yeah, I mean, um, a lot of people don't realize the sacrifice and the hours that go into to – being uh, an elite college athlete it is a full-time job and then some and there's a lot of blood sweat and tears that go into this and and we really respect those people that have stayed with the program they've got their degrees they're graduating they're heading on to to you know something different but and you know might be the last time they lace it up you know for most guys it is and it's an emotional time and and we're just so excited and so appreciative of uh, the gentlemen that came through and, uh, you know, I hope that they understand that we do love them. We want to come, have them come back, come back for homecoming, come back and visit, come back and see uh, the progress of the team as it goes forward. Uh, it's one f- big family, right? We got the Thunderbird family. We want to make sure that we uh, recognize them and their sacrifice to be here with us and then also invite them back and, and continue to be a part of the family as, uh, as they go on in their careers and as we go on uh, to, to, to greener pastures, you know. So I just want to make sure that they understand they're part of this family forever and they're they're uh they've what they've done for for southern utah and cedar city and the and the the public and the school we just really appreciate what they've done and, and what they've brought to our community yeah they that all 12 all 12 young men will either graduate in december or graduate in may so, so some of them are going on to a master's degree and working on a master's degree now so so they've accomplished some things yeah educationally um if if we're successful on Saturday, if we're able to pull out a victory on Saturday, it'll be the first winning. It'll be the first home winning season uh, since 2017 here. So it's it's been five or six seasons since they've had a winning season at home, and we want to send them out the right way and get yeah. that done with a winning season at with a winning record at home. I should say. Yeah. And then and and, and uh, yeah, it's not fair to the other ones, but uh, Brendan uh, Brendan Hutchings is worth mentioning um, because he's a legacy here and his father was a starter here and his uncle started here. So uh, shout out to the Hutchings family and and all that they've done for this football program because he's the third one in the family to come through and finish. Wow. Yeah. Third generation. Boy, has Brendan Brendan made some big catches for us this fall. Oh, he's awesome. I just – I remember, yeah. He's 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 been clutch. Great kid. Local from Beaver, Utah. Correct. Uh, Just just fantastic. Um, we're, we're going up against Lincoln university out of Oakland, California. Give us a, just a, a quick preview. Uh, who, who are they? What do they look like? What kind of football do they play and how are we going to be able to, uh, execute against them? Yeah. NCAA division two team out of Oakland, California, um, ha- have three or four athletes on each side of the football that we'd like to have in our football program. Um, got some kids that can run around and play a little bit now. Um, that, on top of the running, they run their mouth quite a bit too. Um, so, so that's that's interesting to watch on film. Cause Rod's over here smiling. Yeah, I like that. It, it is it is a talkative bunch. Rod's already been told he can't talk back. <laughs> so we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna do our talking with our pads on Saturday, and yeah. not, not with our mouths. Um, but but an interesting group to watch on film. Um, they're spread on offense. So so they're spread on offense, and they're multiple, and and they have two big backs. So so we haven't seen many thick running backs this this fall, and they've got two thick kids that, that pose a problem for us um they're really really big up front okay. um not the most athletic we've seen this year but they're really big up front they flip over on the defensive side of the ball and they're four three too high 
Um, they'll walk. They'll they'll play some cover one and cover three. So so they're moving at two man, the, the two high look, and ended up in cover one and cover three most most plays, most pass plays. Um, their front seven, that their front seven. They've got two defensive linemen that that. that I'd like to coach, and they've got two linebackers that can run and play, and we'd like to coach. Their front seven is better than some of the front sevens we've seen in our conference. Wow. Um, flip it around on special teams, and our, our punter is one of our best football players this year, and their punter is one of their best football players. So it, uh, that, that's an interesting um, comparison there. Um, but they, um, they've won two out of their last four. Um, we hope it affects them a little bit jet lag, but they did something that's really hard to do. They got on an airplane last Friday and flew to the East Coast and, and beat a good football team on the East Coast, and now they're coming here this Saturday, back-to-back wow. road games. Yeah. Um, but but they, they're doing a nice job. So, okay. hey, all the respect in the world. Okay. Um, Thunderbird Nation, that is this Saturday at 1 o'clock. It is senior day. Come out and uh, support and show the love to the 12 seniors that we'll have uh, honored uh, senior day against Lincoln University. Coach, do you have any final words or any shout-outs that you would like to give? Yeah, big, big shout-out to Brandon and Brandy Reese. Made, made the trip out from the East Coast this weekend. I met them. You met them. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're phenomenal. They're, they're, they're phenomenal. Got got to spend two days around them. Was a the highlight of my weekend, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but uh, very, very thankful um, that they were able to come out and see a game and see our hometown. You, you guys kill me. Y- y- y'all kill me with the whole um the the whole not many things to do in Cedar. There's forty four thousand people in this town. That, hey, forty four thousand people. They're currently building two thousand homes. Um, that there, there's a bowling alley and and a theater and a super Walmart and anything you can think of to eat at us in this town. I'm just not sure what y'all are looking for. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, they haven't put they haven't put the Disney World in yet. I'm I'm sorry. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, the amusement park's not in yet. <laughs> and, and hey, they haven't figured out a way to move the ocean to Utah yet. But I, I'm trying to figure out what it is. It's boring y'all now. <laughs> So, hey, I come just out. Need of, to get a little more creative. That's all. I come out of all these towns of five thousand people, and I look around, and go, "Ooh, this is the big town. This is the big city <laughs> yeah. for you. Yeah. This is it, the big city. it is big time." Hey, but we're coming back to that bowling alley thing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it get hey, hey, in in our bowling alley competition and in our football program, we're going to get the ball rolling down the alley, and it's going to be a lot of fun coming up. Cool. Most definitely. Yeah, we're excited. Uh, we're excited for this Saturday first. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get this season wrapped up um, in the next two weeks. Um, we don't want to look too far past that. But uh, there's – look, the, the reality is we won three games so far this year. We got a good opportunity this Saturday and another opportunity coming the week after. And uh, the focus fight finish that's on your shirt, we still got to finish this, this thing, yeah, right? We got, we got two more games that we're going to be in and we're going to be able to, uh, to uh, try to do our best to execute and do, do our thing and – I don't know. I'm just really excited for this Saturday for the seniors. So uh, Thunderbird Nation, come out and support those guys. Um, also, my shout outs really quick. Uh, Ammon Olson and uh, and uh, Jaden Milne, Dave Morris. We took second place in the alumni golf tournament that uh, was held today. That's probably why I got a little pink on the cheeks because <laughs> I was out in the sunshine today. Uh, we left a lot out there, but I told him I'd shout him out on the show. So, Bro- Brother uh, Smith, you're living a hard life. You know that? <laughs> no, it is. I'm not complaining. Hey, My, life a, is hey, good. And the rumors spread fast. You won the ladies' long drive competition today. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Huh? Yeah, no. You look, are the female long drive competition winner. Already my phone's <laughs> blowing up. Already. Already. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, I didn't read the sign, and, and I hit it. I hit it. Well, to, 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 he cheated. He I didn't cheated. Cheat. He cheated some young lady out of her long drive trophy. Well, the sad part is I didn't even win, actually. So I got <laughs> out. Dri- I can't believe I'm saying this in public. It's not the first time it's happened to me either. I, I need to pay more attention on what's going on in the golf course. Uh, but yeah, Dave Morris, great, great guy, great supporter of uh, Southern Utah Athletics, former quarterback Ammon Olson, and uh, Jaden Mills also played uh, uh, golf here at Southern Utah. So Ammon Olson, aka Christian Leitner. Well, he yeah, looks, he's he up looks, there. No, he, he looks like Leitner. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll I'll let you guys talk that one out. But <laughs> uh, what a great guy! He just had a his. Um, uh, he just had his wife just had a baby about two weeks ago, so that's the fourth. Congratulations to those. Congratulations, Ammon. Yeah, uh, look, that's that's a wrap. So for uh, Rod Ward and Coach Delane Fitzgerald, I'm John Smith. 
Uh, go, 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 Tebers. We're going to sign off. Go, Thunderbirds. <laughs>